Welcome fellow Brainiacs, it's great to see you, and Happy New Year. For those new to the channel, my name is Dr. Martin Rutkowski, and I'm an assistant professor of neurosurgery with expertise in brain tumors. Here on this channel, we explore all things brain, so if you've ever been curious about the most beautiful organ there is, you're in the right place. In today's video, we begin the first of a two-part operative video series, in this case on the interhemispheric approach. This approach makes use of a natural corridor between the two cerebral hemispheres, in which we can access deep areas of the brain without transgressing or going through brain tissue itself. Use of these natural corridors allows us to avoid damaging the brain itself and can access deep areas such as the ventricular system or the corpus callosum, a large white matter tract that allows the two cerebral hemispheres to communicate with one another. Our roadmap for this approach is partly formed by the Falk cerebri, an extension of the meninges or the covering over the brain. This fibrous tissue band naturally divides the two cerebral hemispheres and provides an excellent landmark for us to follow our way down towards the ventricular system and corpus callosum. When performing an interhemispheric approach, I place my patients in the lateral position to make use of gravity. Gravity pulls the inferior cerebral hemisphere down from the fox, widening our corridor. Once our patient is positioned, we next turn our attention towards making an incision. We use the location of the coronal suture which is a natural fusion point between bones and the skull to center our incision. A scalpel is used to incise the scalp and retractors are placed to provide exposure of the underlying calvarium or superficial skull. Once this exposure is complete, you can appreciate the sagittal suture, which is a fusion point again between bones of the skull. This is an important superficial landmark for the underlying superior sagittal sinus, which is a large vein that drains much of the brain. It's important with this approach not to damage this vein, as this can cause a life-threatening stroke. The dotted lines outline the initial part of our craniotomy, or opening in the skull. In general, I prefer performing a two-part craniotomy in order to visualize and avoid damage to the underlying superior sagittal sinus. Here the initial part of the craniotomy has been performed, in this case in a rectangular configuration, just off of the midline. The superior sagittal sinus is dissected off of the overlying skull and the second portion of the craniotomy is performed. Now that the dura has been exposed, we plan our dural opening to allow access to the interhemispheric corridor. The dura is opened in a C-shaped fashion as outlined here. Its base is at the approximate location of the superior sagittal sinus. Once the dura is opened, it's tacked up using multiple sutures. You can appreciate the presence of multiple cortical draining veins, which take venous blood from the surface of the brain and drain into the superior sagittal sinus. Using a retractor as seen here, or just the presence of gravity, allows us to access the interhemispheric corridor. As seen here, this allows us to follow the Falk cerebri down into the deep recesses of the brain, where we can appreciate the superficial part of the corpus callosum, the large white matter tract that connects the two cerebral hemispheres. Using gentle suction and electrocautery allows us to make an opening in the corpus callosum known as a corpus callosotomy. Once this is performed, we can access the deepest parts of the brain, including the ventricular system. In part two, I'll take you with me into the operating room, where we perform this approach to remove a colloid cyst.